Our Bible word is John 11, verse 11. These things he said, and after that he said to them, Our friend Lazarus sleeps, but I go that I may wake him up. So, this is about Jesus lazing, or sorry, raising Lazarus from the dead. And it's quite interesting to note that in the Gospel of John, it is this incident of Jesus raising Lazarus that's the cause of his death, the cause of Jesus' crucifixion. In the other Gospels, it is because Jesus went into the temple and turned the ta tables over, etc. Now, of course, John's Gospel has got many unique elements to it because in his Gospel, Jesus turned around the tables, etc. at the beginning of his ministry. If you, go, you can go to John chapter 2. There it speaks of Jesus entering Jerusalem and turning the tables over, cleansing the temple, so to speak. At the other Gospels, that begins, or that happens at the end, just before his, Jesus' crucifixion. But in John's Gospel, that happened at the beginning. And now, towards the end, it's the raising of Lazarus that caused the death of Jesus. And we also read later in the chapter that the chief priests, etc., they also want to kill Lazarus because Jesus raised him from the dead. As much as they want to kill Jesus. So there are these important differences to take note of. John's Gospel has a very unique approach to things. And of course, this is also one of Jesus' signs. If we go to the, look at the structure of, of the Gospel of John, there's mainly two sections. It's basically chapters like from 1 to 12. That is also re referred to as the book of signs. And the signs, these are the miracles that Jesus performs. And there are seven signs. And then the second half of the Gospel of John, or most of it, is what is also referred to as the book of glory from chapter 13 to 20. Take note, chapter 21, that was an addendum. It was something that was added later after the gospel was initially finished. Chapter 21 was later. And also here in chapter 21, we have a further sign of Jesus. But in chapters 1 to 12, we have seven signs of Jesus. And so that's why it's also referred to as the book of signs. For example, in chapter 2, the first sign Jesus did was changing water into wine. In chapter 4, it's where that's where the official son is healed and the healing of a disabled man at the pool of Bethesda, feeding of the 5,000, walking on water, healing of the man born blind. And now we come to the greatest sign of Jesus. That is where Lazarus is raised from the dead. And some scholars speculate here that the beloved disciple on whom this gospel is based. If you go towards the end of the gospel, it says here, well, we know that his witness is true. We know that he saw this thing. These things, in other words, when the spear was pierced into Jesus, the beloved disciple was present to witness this. And also this gospel is based on his eyewitness testimony. Some scholars also suggest that this beloved disciple is Lazarus. Because it's here in chapter 11 where it's mentioned for the first time where Jesus loves a disciple. And here specifically, Lazarus is mentioned. It also says here that Jesus loves Mary and Martha. But the identity of the beloved disciple, it could be Lazarus, because after this, this is where we find all the references to the beloved disciple, and not before this. So it's only from here, from chapter 11 onwards, where the beloved disciple is mentioned. It says there, Speaking of Lazarus, this is the disciple whom you love. After these, this reference, then mention is made of the, dis, the beloved disciple or disciple whom Jesus loved. So maybe, just maybe, the, the beloved disciple is Lazarus. But of course, we cannot know this for sure. So yeah, this is Jesus' greatest sign. This is just before his entry into Jerusalem. And there where the book of glory, in other words, the chapters... 13 to chapter 20 takes over. Of course, glorification refers to Jesus' crucifixion. That's the way he will be glorified. 
But now this is the culminating sign. Now, of course, number seven in Jewish tradition also symbolized perfection or completion. So yeah, all the signs of Jesus has in a sense has become perfected or completed by the raising year of Lazarus, which is the seventh sign which is mentioned in the Gospel of John. And of course, also importantly, this also prefigures or it anticipates the resurrection of Jesus himself. But of course, the resurrection of Jesus will be a, a resurrection of an entirely different order. But here we are, Lazarus, the disciple whom Jesus loves here, it says here. This is the greatest sign, the culmination of the signs. Another thing to note that's unique to the Gospel of John is also that he, Jesus travels back and forth between Jerusalem and Galilee and other places. In the, in the other Gospels, Jesus travels basically once. Apart from the Gospel of Luke, where as, as a boy he goes to Jerusalem, Jesus only travels to Jerusalem at the end of his ministry. In the Gospel of John, Jesus travels back and forth. He's in Jerusalem multiple times. At least on two or three occasions, Jesus was in Jerusalem. And he was in Jerusalem before, in Judea. And it says there that the Jews wanted to kill him. They wanted to stone him because he said, you made yourself equal to God. And now, of course, Jesus is in Perea. He's across the Jordan, on the eastern side of the Jordan River. And now Lazarus is sick. So they send messengers to Jesus, telling him, Lord, the one who you love, he is sick. And so Jesus, it, it relates here, that Jesus stayed there for two days. It's not as if Jesus didn't care or anything. It specifically says that he loved Lazarus. But because of the timing in the Gospels, it's, Lazarus was probably already dead by the time the messengers arrived at Jesus. Because Jesus also says here he's asleep. Because you remember, after two days, because it would have been a day's journey from Bethany to where Jesus was in Perea, and then Jesus stayed two days further, and then he went eventually after, after two days to Bethany, where Lazarus' home was, and then he, he's told that he's been dead for four days already. So the, the chronology indicates that by the time the messengers came to Jesus, Lazarus has already been passed away. So after two days now in Perea, after receiving the news, Jesus says, let us go to Judea. And of course that's significant because Judea, that's the place or the province where, I mean, that's closely situated. Bethany was pretty close to Jerusalem. And that's, Jerusalem is the place that wants to kill Jesus. Judea, the Jews, that, that's what, there are those who are offended by Jesus. They want to get rid of him. It's also the place of the high priest, etc. So Jesus says, let us go to Judea. And of course, his, his disciples also said to him, let's go to verse 8, Rabbi, lately the Jews sought to stone you, and you are going there again? And Jesus explains here, well, while I'm here, it's time of daylight. So make use of the daylight, because if it's darkness, you stumble. And then in verse 11, our Bible word, it says, These things he said, and after that he said to them, Our friend Lazarus sleeps, but I go that I may wake him up. And of course, the disciples misunderstand. They think, well, if he's asleep, he'll get better. That's a normal way you get better if you're sick. But then Jesus had to explain to them, No, Lazarus is dead. And he says, I'm glad that that you know this and that, that you're not there so so you can know now that he's been dead now already also if we arrive there for a few days and this is a way also the way God's glory will be revealed now of course Thomas in verses 16 he says let us also go that we may die with him so he has indication again because Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, that's the reason why he's going to die. So Jesus dies to give life to Lazarus. And it's also the central theme of the whole gospel. If you go there to chapter 3 verse 16, For God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son. It's Jesus came to die 
to give everybody life. In a similar sense, yeah, Jesus is going to die eventually because he gives life to Lazarus. So Jesus goes to Bethany and there eventually meets up with Martha and Mary. And now he has this discussion with them and says, Lord, if you were here, I know nothing would have happened to my brother, etc. And, and Martha also says to Jesus, I know that he will rise again on the resurrection at the last day. And now we come to an I am saying of Jesus. Remember, there's also seven I am sayings of Jesus. As there are seven signs of Jesus in, in the main part of the gospel, there's also seven I am sayings. And here in verses 25, Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. So then Jesus eventually orders for the, for the stone to be removed from the tomb. And there's also the warning, don't do this, Lord, because there's already a stench. He already stinks. He's been dead for four days. There was also this belief that, that the spirits of the dead hovered around their bodies for the first three days. Then after three days, then the spirit will depart wherever the spirit was supposed to go. And by saying four days, it's also showing now Lazarus is really dead. His spirit has departed. He's not, ling he's not lingering there by the grave anymore. But Jesus orders, remove the stone, even after four days. And of course, yeah, the greatest sign in the Gospel of John occurs. Jesus commands Lazarus, come forth. And by this way, Jesus indicates also he is the resurrection and the life. Not only for the future resurrection, which, which is the primary referent, but also already here. Jesus has come also to give us life already in the present. So this is the greatest sign of Jesus, the raising of Lazarus. He is, Jesus is the resurrection and the life. And of course, yeah, this will eventually cost him his own life. Jesus dies to give Lazarus life here. Yeah. But also the whole world, everybody, eternal life. And this is why this is the greatest sign that is recorded in the Gospel of John.